some scientific terms that you might like to familiarize yourselves with. Magnets and magnetic forces. A magnet is a material that produces a magnetic field, thereby imparting a force to magnetic materials. The poles of a magnet. Every magnet has a north and south pole. Like poles repel and unlike poles attract. The magnetic field, also known as flux density, this refers to the imaginary field lines that connect the north and south pole of a magnet, flowing from north to south and are strongest near the poles. And friction, this is the force that resists relative motion between any two surfaces or within a fluid, that is a liquid or a gas medium. Some theory prerequisites. Although this may be the first time you are encountering magnets as a topic, most of you would have been exposed to them somewhere before, either at home or at school or in a museum. So some of the questions that you may have thought of when you are playing with magnets is where, what shape were they, what do they seem to do, do they get stuck to things or do they fall off. You would have seen fridge magnets or magnets in toys and almost universally you would have experienced magnetic attraction. Has anyone experienced magnetic repulsion? How come magnets stick to some things and not to others? These are some of the questions you may think about or may have already experienced somewhere or another. You would have noticed that between each other magnets either attract or repel. When they repel you can almost feel the field between them like a bubble between the poles. Then there are substances that either get stuck to a magnet like iron or nickel or don't, which is almost everything else. To understand why some substances are magnetic and some aren't, one has to look much deeper. It is essentially to do with how the atoms in the substance are organized. The relative orientation of something called electron spin determines if a substance is magnetic or not. In most substances, the spins cancel each other out. In substances like iron, nickel and cobalt, the spins are mostly aligned in the same direction hence making these substances magnetic. Given that gravity and friction play an important role in this model, it is important to know the weight of the pen plus the magnet and how much it is. This can be estimated and measured using an electronic weighing scale. How much can you tilt the pen before it falls? How much does a magnetic force have to be for this pen to work? It so happens that the pen stand works if the magnetic force is greater than half the weight of the pen plus magnet, but less than the total weight. That is, the weight of the pen plus magnet is greater than the magnetic force, which is greater than half the weight of the pen plus magnet. On what all does the magnetic force actually depend? The strength of the magnets as well as the distance between them is what this force depends on for this model. The ring magnet has four faces upper, lower, inner and outer. The curved, that is the inner and outer surfaces, aren't poles. They have the same polarity as the surface they are closer to. That is, half the curved surface is north and half is south. Using a compass, can you figure out which flat surface is the north pole and which the south? Attraction and repulsion. It is very interesting to note that one can make magnetically levitating models using both magnetic attraction, like the one you have just made, the pen stand, and magnetic repulsion, for example a horizontally levitating pen stand or a maglev train. Depending on the configuration and setup of the model, one always needs one or the other, either attraction or repulsion, to counter gravity. And with the assist assistance of a friction point, one can achieve magnetic levitation. Stable equilibrium. One of the most important things exhibited by this toy is stable equilibrium. The main property of equi equilibrium is the force that tries to bring the system to a stable state or least energy when moved. This is clearly exhibited by the low attraction between magnets, much lower than the weight of the pen. The friction. Another interesting aspect to talk about is the ballpoint pen itself. Why is it called a ballpoint pen? Where is this ball? It's part of the pen tip of course and designed such that it rolls smoothly within the pen refill so that ink is dispensed uniformly while you write. A ball or sphere has a very small contact point, thereby also reducing friction and making your writing experience smooth. Compare this to the old days when feathers were used as pens and the friction and writing comfort was surely rougher. 
Sometimes a rougher experience is desirable for a better grip of pen on paper resulting in better handwriting. For example, a fountain or ink pen or pencil invariably makes your handwriting better, but with a ballpoint pen you can write faster, which is sometimes more desirable. Friction depends on two things, essentially the normal force, which we denote by the capital letter N, between the two surfaces and what is called the coefficient of friction by the Greek letter mu between the surfaces, resulting in the relation F equals mu N. Note that mu also depends on whether an object is stationary, rolling or sliding on a surface, resulting in the terms static, rolling and kinetic friction respectively. Friction experienced in air is often called air drag and that in a liquid is called viscosity. Magnetic levitation or maglev trains and how they offer high speed as well as low maintenance are a great example of the model you have just made. Also, maglev trains are not affected by rolling friction since trains aren't in direct contact with the track. You may read more about maglev trains on the internet if needed. The highest speed of 603 km recorded by a maglev train in April 2015 while testing long distance maglev trains in Japan. Shanghai in China has the world's only commercially running maglev train from the city center to the airport. The distance is 26 kilometers and the journey time just 8 minutes. What is its average speed, do you think? It's almost 200 kilometers an hour. Appreciate how impressive this number is given that the train has to start and stop, so its maximum speed must be much more. And of course it is, about 450 kilometers an hour. What does this speed mean to you? What about an aeroplane? Planes fly at about 800 to 1100 kilometers an hour. Traveling from Bangalore to Chennai, which is about 360 kilometers, in about an hour on a maglev train to give an idea of the impact of the speed. Current trains take anywhere from 5 to 7 hours to do the distance. Magnets themselves are of course used extensively in the industry, from producing electricity in power turbines, to being essential in various electronics, for example speakers, to vital use in the medical industry, for example MRI, that is magnetic resonance imaging. Not only have magnets and magnetism shaped the evolution of life on our planet and made it possible, but they continue to play a crucial role in our day-to-day -day life. We hope you have enjoyed making this very simple model and will delve into it further to expand your understanding of the wonders of magnets. It is worth appreciating how ubiquitous magnets and their effects are in the universe. Thank you.